So good evening. The reason why I'm standing here today at this night um, was really a thinking moment because I was on a party on a training event, obviously. And everybody was dancing and the one girl stopped right in the middle of the movement of dancing and reached into her pocket, took hold her mobile and looked onto the device. And this puzzled me. Why is she doing that? She was totally engaged in dancing, in enjoying the music, in living in the moment. And suddenly she takes on, goes on to her mobile, and I was asking her, what are you doing? She received a Facebook message. And it was so important to her to check on that, that she was sitting down for about 10 minutes, really going totally out of the group and lived with her mobile device in a closed space, focusing totally on the device. So, if you think about social media, the first thing about is buzzing around in the IT world and the marketing and so on are different social networks. And if you see on the world, this is kind of divided and will be definitely a thing which you're going to encounter. So how many of you are member of a social network like LinkedIn, Facebook, Xing, whatever? <laughs> Pretty much everybody, right? Zero. <laughs> All the green parts on that world map is Facebook. So one guy invented a kind of computer program. Stole it. <laughs> Some say he stole the idea, and he's kind of influencing the world. That's pretty scary sometimes. <laughs> So, I think I'm working right now is about serious social networks, so called. So, the buzzword right now is, uh, for example, from IBM, making business social. Because the idea is that they want to work more efficiently, the people are going to work more diverse, not on the same place, not on the same time. So, they think that social media and the principles which are behind it are going to solve the problems. And actually there are quite a few things which are going to implement it maybe also in your life, in your business day life, uh, which are going to change the way and the work you're doing right now. So if you look at that picture, you can't see the icons properly, it's a rainbow of the social media. And social media, as I understand the term, is not only the social network Facebook thingy, it's also any kind of website or technical solution where you can interact with people on the net. So it's not only these famous sites, it's also any kind of normal blog, for example, with the commenting function. So you're able to interact not directly, not at the same time, you are waiting a response on the thing you commented. And as you can see, there are a lot of things about it, from various ideas, various functions and whatever. It's impossible to know them all. And what it leads to that, if, I, if you just look at it from a perspective of a bird, is we become an instant information society. Like the girl on the party, we directly <coughs> react to any kind of information which is coming to us. And this is going to change our life, because this phenomenon of an information overflow is becoming very, very serious in my opinion. It will, of course, change the teamwork, the way you work, what you're going to do the way you want to interact with people. Because the 
work and the business is going to be more diverse, more not on the same time, not in the same space. It is kind of uh, increasing in technical collaboration that will lead to a status maybe that you're always on. Managers, for example, have a kind of 24-7 mentality sometimes. They have always their mobile on and they're always responding to it, which in my opinion is not helpful. And that leads to a constant pressure. If I have always the mobile, the thing, the device which I'm connected to, the cloud, to the internet, in my pocket or somewhere really next and close to me, I will always feel the need to check on it so I'm not missing anything. And this is changing the life and the way we are doing things and also changing, maybe it's also a fear of not missing anything. And if you're having weekends, and still people are working on the projects on weekends and you will receive an email and an SMS or whatever you're currently not on your free time anymore, you're working. So it's an invasion into private life. And uh, one thing you can directly look at it right now is that companies are using social media as a tool as a tool to get into touch with you directly on a one-to-one -one basis. And you counter that in Facebook and any other network site by any advertisements, for example, or any farm bill message you get, or whatever, somebody is liking a video and you currently get the information that he added that to his list. And what it basically is that uh, social media as a tool for the companies is a direct mass advertising machine which you can easily use with less cost and reach many more people than the normal print stuff. And you account a new form of advertisements, like uh, if you know the site of Foursquare, you're getting a reward if you check in with your mobile device that you're actually at that place in the moment. So you get, for example, a discount like free popcorn. And we are always connected to the internet, and so, so anybody is, who is following us is going to see, oh, he's on that place and he's going to watch that movie and he's eating popcorn because he received that discount. So in conclusion, it's an involuntarily mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing which we are letting the companies uh, do to our lives because we want to have that discount, right? And what it leads to is that not only we are getting something, but also others who are really connected to us are influenced by our, by our behavior in the digital life. So we, of course, like the idea to keep in touch with our friends, even if they're living somewhere in Europe, far, far away to the place where I'm being right now. It is, of course, an aspect of our social life right now because organizing parties, sending out invitations for events, is going to take place in the online world. And even sometimes it affects relationships, because someone changed the status on some website, and we have to argue with the person we love, because I did something online, right? One positive example. <laughs> it's one year old. It's a social network for trainers by trainers. And what the thing we are basically doing is the people who are active in it is we collect valuable training related information compiled to computer mediated collective action. That's very, very yeah. objective and kind of thingy. But to get in touch with it is you have a question, for example, you, you're searching for an energizer for a special situation. 
You asked a question in the forum, and within hours, somebody <coughs> from all world of Europe is answering directly to the, your needs, and you have a solution, and it just only took you minutes. And what I'm looking and searching for and offering you is that I need explorers to make this network more valuable. I need contributors who are going to uh, maybe write an, a report on a special topic you're very interested in. So if you want to do that, please approach me because I think that you can share that information and really increase the value of the network we are enjoying so much. So, if I conclude it, if keeping all that in mind, there are a few consequences I think we have to consider. Is we have to keep balance between the digital self and us as a human being. Because we are human, we don't have the ability to stay more than 24 hours away. You might try it for a while, but it's not going to work for months and even years. And that could be one solution, of course, is to take the turtle for the walk, right? It is an idea of developed in, from, from a French guy. Uh, yeah. It's, a French, it's an old French custom to take a turtle for a walk, which means you don't stretch yourself, you let the turtle take the lead and you just follow, if you want it. <laughs> we have to keep and draw a line between our privacy and transparency. So your actions and your digital life are going to influence you on a direct basis. For example, there are some guys which actually uh, programmed a website where are filtering all Twitter uh, feeds about people who are somewhere and twittering about it that they are not at home. So it's a perfect information tool for thieves and buggers that you're not at home. Oh, wonderful, he's not at home. So I can go inside and take all the stuff here. And please don't forget, the net is not an area where somebody is forgetting anything. It's always there. So any information which is on the internet is going to stay there. And with search algorithms going better and better in <coughs> from day to day basis, more and more people are going to find that information. So you have to keep and be aware of the information you share with your networks, with your websites. And how many of you have, for example, written in some website that they're going to be here, right? Many people, I think. So you, they know that you're not at home. <laughs> Another thing, uh, in my opinion, is that attention is becoming a new currency. Attention is a currency because companies are struggling to fight for it in advertising and in, in the digital world. So the longer you spend time on advertisement and uh, dealing with the stuff, it becomes very, very important because the day has only 24 hours and you can spend so many hours not dealing with that kind of information. It's totally not directly useful. So you have to consider and find a solution for yourself how much information I'm going to process what I'm going to do, what is important for me, and how I deal with it, these issues. And I want to close with that one, that digital contact is no surrogate for human contact.